Hello, my name is Pam Bartha. The topic today is how EMF and RF radiation impacts our health, how it makes us sick, and also dirty electricity. If we haven't met yet, my name is Pam Bartha and I'm the author of Become a Wellness Champion and the founder of Live Disease Free. This topic today is so important for those of us that want to, number one, recover from chronic disease, or maybe we're healthy and we want to stay healthy. This topic is a type of environmental toxin that is invisible to us. We can't see it and it really ages us. It really promotes these infections that are making us sick. So once again, the topic is how EMF and RF radiation makes us sick, also dirty electricity and solutions, how we can minimize this radiation in our life. So please, if you know people that are very health conscious or maybe people that are suffering with chronic disease, make sure to share this video with them. Make sure to please interact with me on this as we're together right now. Please give me, show me some love, thumbs up, hearts, whatever. But it's very important that this information gets out because it is something that affects all of us, whether we're really sick or whether we're healthy and we want to stay healthy. So I'm just going to check to make sure you guys can hear me and say hello to a few people. Let's see, where are we here? It's coming. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. And I want to be able to see your comments. So please, as I'm sharing today, please share. Thank you so much for the love already. And just please put your questions in the question box. So many of us are dealing with disease symptoms, especially multiple sclerosis, other chronic disease. Some of you that are finding me are healthy and you want to stay that way. But most people that find me are definitely dealing with some type of illness. And I share in my teaching that it is so important to support the body. And one of the big ways that we support the body initially is we have to greatly reduce three big environmental toxins. The one we're gonna talk about today is EMF and RF radiation and dirty electricity. So this is, all three of them come from electrical devices and they're kind of called electrosmog, that's another term for them. The reason that they're so important is that number one, it affects basically the young and the sick and the old the most. So those of us that are sick dealing with chronic disease or maybe we're older, I know I'm older, but I mean, as we get older and older, it's gonna affect us more and also young children. The way that it affects us let me first tell you what it is and where it comes from. So when I say RF radiation, what that would mean is that it's wireless radiation. It's coming from our wireless devices. It's coming from our cell phones and our cordless phones and our computers, our routers, our smart meters that are outside of our bedroom or house that are the electrical meters, cell towers, uh, smart appliances in our home. There are so many wireless devices now that are emitting this wireless radiation and it's increasing every year in our environment. Right now we're working with a 4G but we're going to be at a 5G which is going to be a lot more potent in the next few years. So this radiation that's building and building in our environment it's invisible and we don't know that it's there but it really impacts us in a lot of ways. That is the RF radiation. Now I'm going to talk about EMF radiation. That is a little bit different in that that is found where you have these big power lines, for example. So that would be electric and magnetic fields, especially from electrical devices, but also from power lines, etc. And that is another type of electric or electromagnetic pollution that we have to deal with and we have to be aware of it. And then the third one would be dirty electricity, and that is coming from different types of devices. So for example, fluorescent lighting will emit dirty electricity. So now what we want to first discuss is like, we know what it is and we know who it's affecting, but how is it affecting us? There are hundreds of studies that have shown that this radiation will decrease certain neurotransmitters in our body and certain hormones and it also decreases antioxidants in our body. So then if we have less antioxidants, we end up with more free radicals. 
it really increases inflammation in the body. And those of us that understand, like when we have inflammation with chronic disease, it's infection. There are a lot of studies showing that it that this radiation that's around us, it's actually increasing the microbes, the growth of them in our body. Dr. Klinghardt has done some studies in his lab, just looking at the ambient radiation, just from the lights and the computer and his cell phone and just all of whatever's going on in the labs. And they've looked at two different Petri dishes of microbes. One of them they covered and they protected it from all the radiation. The other one left it open to be exposed. And the culture that was open grew 600 times faster. Okay, so they were both inoculated with the same microbes, but the one that was not protected from the radiation grew 600 times faster. So what does that mean for us? And I should also say that it also produced many, many more toxins. These microbes, they sense this radiation and it makes them kind of angry or more virulent, more disease causing. And so what happens is as they're growing faster and producing more poisons, we get sick quicker. This is a really big thing to understand because those of us that have chronic disease, we have multiple types of infection in our body, not just one bug causing, let's say MS is just one, let's say it's Lyme disease. No, there's multiple microbes involved. So it's really important to understand that this radiation is promoting what's making us sick. And that's what we have to be really aware of. So we know science has shown, hundreds of studies have shown that it makes these infections grow faster. They produce more poison. We have more inflammation. It actually increases the permeability of the blood brain barrier. So things can cross into our central nervous system quicker than it should have. And as far as the hormones, we can have lower testosterone. Another big one is that it really impairs sperm. So Actually, I actually watched Dr. Magda Havis. She is an amazing hero doctor, along with Dr. Klinghardt. I was just listening to one of her courses that I purchased, and she shared in there that, and I saw the picture, you could see sperm one hour exposure to EMF and five hour exposure. And after five hours, with or without exposure to EMF, like they were almost dead. They hardly moved at all. That's a really big deal for people that want to have families, right? Because it's really impacting the sperm. It's really Im impacting reproduction in humans, big, big time. So for those of us that are sick, like myself, I'm past the family, but this impacts our children and our grandchildren. So for those of you that have families, it's really important to share that. It's really huge. So we know that it impacts our brain. We know that for my students, number one, when they start to reduce this radiation in their environment, they sleep so much better. That's a really big factor because it does impact our neurotransmitters and also the activity of the infections. Even things like ringing in the ears is made worse by the radiation. So this is important to understand that if you're trying to get well, you are working at getting well and you're treating infections that are causing your disease, it's very important to understand that we have to get this radiation down because it's gonna be a lot easier to treat the infections. Your body is gonna be happier, right? It's not gonna be impacting you in all those different ways as far as decreasing antioxidants and decreasing certain hormones and decreasing neurotransmitters. So you're just gonna feel better in many different ways as far as having energy and as those infections are more quiet, you'll find that you have more energy, you sleep better at night, you might have a little bit of symptom relief in many different ways, whether it's the brain fog, whether it's the ringing in the ear, vibrating, any type of neur neurological symptom. So that is number one, what it is and who it affects the most. That's another really important point to, to consider is that we're all sensitive to this radiation. It's just that some people are hypersensitive, especially children in schools. And in schools, they're putting these commercial routers in that are way stronger than the routers that are in our homes. And some of these poor kids, they may be working in a classroom, they may have a strong commercial router over their head and they're getting terrible headaches. They're, it's so bad that some kids are actually getting um, arrhythmia with their heart 
and they're actually putting in devices to regulate their hearts in certain schools. And this is all documented. We're gonna do a blog post on this and we're gonna summarize all of the solutions that I talk about. You'll find that on Live Disease Free within the next week. But the key is that because the children's brains are a lot more water, they cannot handle all this radiation and it's making kids sick especially the ones that are out of balance with their microbes. And that's what I teach is that a lot of us are out of balance with our microbes and that's why we have the symptoms. So the radiation makes the bugs, these infections, when we're out of balance in our body to grow faster, it makes us sick quicker. It prevents us from recovering as fast as we should. So when we remove this as low as possible, you know, it's impossible to live without any technology because technology is really important for communication. But I'm gonna share with you now some solutions that you can implement today that, and I would love for you guys to share the successes that you've had. And some of you may have started implementing these things already and just please type in the comment box below what kind of things you've noticed as far as improvements. So as far as how to reduce the radiation in our environment, number one, the thing like the cell phone is the really, really big one. So your cell phone emits a lot of, le of radiation. So for guys, you're not supposed to keep it in your pocket or on your belt. If you do, what you can do is turn it on airplane mode. There is also a shield that you can put, it looks like a cell phone cover and it goes on the back of your cell phone. And so then if you have it in your pocket, you could be protecting your body, your private parts, right? Your important reproductive parts and it'll be pushing it out. But I personally would put it in airplane mode when you're not using it. That's really important. When you turn it to airplane mode, it stops the transmission. And then you can always turn it on to do a quick check. When you're talking on your cell phone, make sure that you talk, like what I do is I use a speakerphone. I never hold it to my ear. Did you know that in the training manual of all the cell phones, it says do not hold it right next to your ear because it is so strong. So use your, number one, use, um, the speakerphone, and I also will use earbuds. So like if I'm at traveling and it's really noisy, then I will use earbuds and I will hold the phone as far away as possible. Really important. So when you're sleeping, make sure you do not have your phone beside your bed unless it's in airplane mode. And I still, I've looked at my phone and for some reason, if I put it on airplane mode, sometimes it's still picking up the Wi-Fi in my home and I'm not sure why. So I have it many feet away from my home and I put it on airplane mode. So that's very important. Where you're sleeping, this is the biggest concern. Make sure you have no cordless phones in your bedroom. The cordless phones that we have in North America right now, they're emitting very high, high levels of radiation all the time. So what I'm using right now, it may sound pretty old fashioned, but I'm using a corded phone because I communicate a lot with people and I'm on the phone a lot. So I use a corded phone. What's so interesting that I, I found out just a few years ago, I was talking to a professor at our local university and he's in electrical engineering and he teaches about radiation, about the EMF radiation into his students. And he said, I don't have a cordless phone in my house. He said, we know it's bad. We know the radiation is bad, but we don't know how bad it is, so I don't have it. He owned an acreage under some very high voltage power lines and he sold it. He said, I know that the EMF radiation is really bad. We just don't know how bad it is and I'm not taking a risk. So this is where we have to, especially when we're re recovering from chronic disease, we have to minimize the radiation in our environment as much as possible and you will heal quicker if you're treating the infections, all the steps that I teach in the Live Disease Free System. So please make sure that you share this information with others. Um, share, please hit the share button and also please keep interacting with me. I love all of your comments and your thumbs up, etc. So that the bedroom is the biggest, most important place that you have to protect your um, health there while you're sleeping. They say that while you're sleeping, the radiation impacts you so much more. So this is where, for myself, I the neat thing is that I purchased, and I will show you on, an, on a future uh, Facebook Live, but I've actually purchased the meters so that I could read because I'm teaching people this stuff, so I need to understand. So 
in my bedroom like when even when we purchased this house i tested the whole house and i because there's stuff coming into our home too so this home was in a good area it doesn't have a lot of there's no cell towers right outside because we moved away from a house that had a big cell tower which was emitting a lot of radiation at our home all the time but what you can do is if you can't move i'll give you some ideas so number one your bedroom is the most important place so no, no cordless phones in your bedroom for sure and then also the cordless phones that have those antennas, they're even double strength, they're even more strong than the other corded phones. Then also make sure that your cell phone is on, on uh, airplane mode and try to keep it as far away as possible. I know that there's some people that find music really helps them to sleep. So what you can do is download music onto your phone and turn it on airplane mode so it is not emitting but then still keep it far away from your bed like still keep it because it's still an electrical device it's not going to give off as much emf but it still will if you have a office that's right next to your bedroom so this was a good friend of mine and i went to visit his home and i measured with my meters his sleeping area and it was like so strong it was like he was right next to a microwave that was going full time and it, he was like he's a very smart guy like he's a, a scientist type person and he's like I am so embarrassed he said this is why I feel so much better when I'm camping in my motorhome out in the bush than when I'm sleeping in my own bed so first of all they had two cordless phones uh, one beside his wife and one beside him he had the antenna so that was blasting he had an office right next to his bedroom he had the cordless phones in his office he had a wireless uh, printer he had his computer his router was there ipad so you have to consider all of these things we can have uh, wireless keyboards and your computer for example so right now i'm working behind my laptop and i have my laptop plugged into an ethernet cable so then i turn the wireless signal off on my computer and I also turn the Bluetooth off because I'm behind the computer many, many hours a day and I do not want to expose myself to all that radiation. So the way I work with my computer is I've pushed it back a couple of feet. So, and that's to kind of lower the EMF radiation. And then I work with a, um, my laptop is pushed back. So I have a wired keyboard. So that also is wired. It's not a wireless keyboard. And then my mouse is wired also. And what's happened is that when I used to work, before I learned all this, when I used to work behind my computer, it was measuring at least 200 microwatts per meter squared. That's a, you know, that's the units that they measured in, 200. When I turned all of this signal off just on my laptop, it went down to below five. And they say that where you sleep, the radiation should be less than five microwatts per meter squared. So that's really important. So this has, really helped me so I'm on the phone and I'm not getting radiation from cordless phones and you have to be aware that the what do you call it the um, the main source the I, sorry I don't know what it's called but the part of your your cordless phone the tower whatever that emits a ton of radiation into your home so you have to be aware of this what we also do and recommend is for you to turn your or unplug your router at night when you're all sleeping you don't need your router anyhow and then it's not emitting radiation throughout your house while you're sleeping if you're working beside any electrical devices just try to keep as much distance because then you're lowering the electro the electromagnetic fields that are coming off of the electrical devices so your computers are the big thing the router please make sure that you're not sitting next to your router because it is pumping off i tested some of the newer routers this was a couple of years ago my son's it was like 600 microwatts per meter squared and it's supposed to be under five to be safe like where you're sleeping etc so you have to be aware that the router gives off a ton of it's got to blast through your whole house right so the router make sure that you have it in a place that it's away from you make sure that your bedroom is a sanctuary if you're living in a condo it's important to understand that you're getting wi-fi signals from above from the sides from below and what you can do is you can get these really nice um, canopies a bed canopy that it kind of looks like you know in the countries where they have the mosquito netting 
that netting, it ha it's lined with silver and it will block out all the radiation so that you can sleep peacefully. So you would put something underneath, like under the mattress to block it from coming up. And then it's like this netting that goes over your bed. So it's totally lets the air through, but it blocks out all of the radiation. It's very significant for people that are chronically sick. They notice a difference. They sleep so much better at night. And it's so important for those of you that are working with me, the wellness champions, and some people that are going to be working in the future, that we have to greatly reduce this radiation. We have to be aware of it. And so what we do is as we decrease this radiation, then we recover faster and we age less after that. And for the, all of us, we like to age less. I'm sure that's important to all of us. It is for me too. So I'm gonna head over to your questions for a minute and see the types of questions you have for me about radiation. All right, for some reason, let me see. I hope, yes, I can see your questions. So hello, Kelly, and hi, Sharon. Hi, Danielle and Veronica. Hello, Celia, Lee, Olivia. So any questions, let me see here. Oh my goodness, you had no idea this could affect you. Yes, this is something that we didn't have to worry about 50 years ago. This is something that is, and I'm gonna be teaching you about all kinds of other things in the environment that that is why this, that's another reason why there is such an epidemic of chronic disease because these invisible factors in our environment, they are aging us quicker than we should and they're making us sicker. And there is a ton of research. I love Dr. Meg to have us. I've been following her for a few years. I just took a brain solutions course with Dr. Klinghart. He hosted it and she was invited to speak there. She, she is a Canadian professor, yay. And she is so knowledgeable about this and she has such a big heart. And she's invited all over the world to speak about this. And Dr. Klinghart is another huge advocate of getting this information out because he works with the chronically sick. And he has seen this also that if we don't deal with this radiation properly, then it's so much harder to treat these infections. I talk to different doctors very often and they've, many of them have shared that it's so much harder to get help people to recover today than it was even five, 10 years ago. This is one of the factors. This is one of the reasons. Hello, Celia. All right, and Dawn and let me see here. So you always have your phone next to your bed. Yikes. Yes, you'll definitely have to put it in air, on, for sure on airplane mode. It is very shocking, but it's so important to understand this. Hello, Maureen. 4G Gigablast was recently installed in our city, one line being buried at the end of our driveway. So now there's Wi-Fi signals everywhere. And so this is why you have to, like some of us can't move. But there's lots of things that we can do in our home. As I mentioned, that canopy is one option, but I also bought this black paint. You can get this black paint and you literally paint the wall and it blocks the radiation from coming into your home. But then it's, your wall is black. So then you would have to paint over top of it. Like you'd have to use a really good, strong primer and then paint whatever color that you want on top. There's also different film you can put on windows. There's different types of curtains you can use. You can block it out of your home also. There's lots of wonderful things that you can use to block it. And there's blankets and there's clothing. Less EMF, I think lessemf.com has a bunch of different products you can use. I saw clothing at uh, biopureus.com is a place that you can find clothing and Dr. Klinghard, Klinghard Academy, K-L-I-N-G-H-A-R-D-T. Klinghard Academy, he's got, he's got really great videos there about this radiation, and he also has a page with information about things that are very helpful to decrease the radiation. But the simple things that I shared with you, it's a really great start. Shut your router off at night, very simple. Turn your phone into airplane mode. Don't hold your phone against your ear. You talk speakerphone or use the earbuds. Hold the phone as far away from you as possible. 
Some of you may want to look at a corded phone in your a cord, a, yeah, a cordless corded phone. Sorry, a corded phone in your home. All right. So hello, Maureen and Leah. We have Google home devices in our kitchen and our bedroom. And this is another sad thing is that all the appliances are now becoming smart. That means they're all emitting radiation. So we're going to be getting signals from our television and our washer and our dryer and our dishwasher and our fridge. It's just, it's something to be really aware of and it's something to minimize as much as you can because it really will, number one, keep you healthy and also number two, it'll help you to recover a lot faster. So can you post these doctors' <laughs> names, spelling? Yes, we will. Uh, Dr. Magda, M-A-D-A, -A, and then H-A-V-A-S, Magda Havis, very easy. If you just type her in, if you do EMF, RF, Magda Havis, um, you'll find her. Lots of really great videos on YouTube. She's a pioneer. It's really scary. Um, universities that have these huge cell towers, like right beside areas where students are working, they have a much higher incidence of different types of tumors. There's tons and tons of research on this, but it's not getting out because it's such a big industry and it's, it's everywhere and they do not want. So you have to protect yourself. That's the big key. Hi, Oksana. So what is the correct name for that silver under the mattress to block the radiation? You'll find it on these different places where they sell the, the, the EMF and RF radiation solutions. So lessemf.com. I'm going to be putting a lot of that on my website also, but also on Dr. Klinghardt's website. I know that doc, because I, I know that you ha are one of my students, Oksana. So Dr. Ross Anderson, he also is starting a franchise. He's very knowledgeable about the EMF, RF radiation, and dirty electricity, and he has somebody who's manufacturing. So basically there's people that make it, they get this fabric and they just sew it up so that you basically have it draping over your bed, just like a mosquito netting. And then you also have to line under your bed because you don't want the radiation coming up, let's say from something in the basement or from if you're in an apartment building or a, con a condominium. So it, I do, it doesn't really have a name, but if you go on those websites, you'll see it listed there. And they're, you, they're not cheap because they're lined with silver, but they're definitely helpful. They're hugely helpful. What about paint? Yes. Uh, what about the paint in your homes? Is the paint on your walls environmental concern? Well, obviously when we're painting our walls, they are coming out with better paints that are a lot more environmentally friendly. They're more expensive, but they're definitely better. We're not, you know, when, when we paint our walls, we would be exposed to different chemicals, right? They're not long-term and obviously try to get the cleanest paint you can, but it's not going to affect us as much as this radiation. This radiation is bombarding us. It's hitting us 24 seven. Many of us have these smart meters outside, sometimes it's our, outside of our bedroom wall, and they give very strong pulses of electromagnetic radiation. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was at my son's home and I measured it, and every 30 seconds it was hitting like a thousand microwatts per meter squared, then it would go down to zero. Every 30 seconds, and then boom. And this was outside of their bedroom wall. And people don't know this and they don't know why they have pain and why they don't sleep at night and why these infections are getting, why all this inflammation is building in their body. And it's from, this is one factor. There's many factors. We're going to be talking about a lot of different ones, but this is definitely one factor. Hello, Denise and Mia. All right. So I think that's all the questions. I think you guys is, this is quite a new topic for a lot of people, but it is such an important topic to address. And the big thing I want to share with you right now is that there are so many things that we don't know. We don't learn this in school. We don't learn this from our healthcare providers. What I do is I teach people how to be the director of their health. It is so vital for you to be the director of your health. You have to understand what is going on in this world. You have to understand why you feel lousy, why you have these symptoms. 
you have to play an active role in your recovery because you cannot just assume that somebody that you meet as a healthcare, even an integrative healthcare provider, that they understand this topic well because most of them don't yet. So what I do is I teach people how to be the director of their health. And what that means is that they recover from terrible chronic disease like multiple sclerosis. We know that chronic disease, the biggest factor is infection. Big, biggest factor. And I've done lots of different videos on that. You can find them on our YouTube channel, Live Disease Free. You can find them on our Facebook channel. And that is number one important to become aware of. But then we have to also we can't just treat these infections. I wish it was as simple as popping a pill. It is not, it's, it takes strategy. So this is one little thing that we have to do. We have to greatly reduce the, the radiation. Otherwise those infections are fighting back. They hate the radiation. They're growing faster. They're producing more poisons and you're trying to eat right and you're trying to exercise and you're doing all those other things and nothing is working, right? Even as far as taking killing agents. So it's so important to learn all these things because when you do, you can completely change your life. So if you just found me for the first time, we have livediseasefree.com is our website. Lots of amazing blog posts. We have lots of free videos on our Live Disease Free YouTube channel. Lots of free videos on Facebook. Start to learn about this whole new path that you can go down and take your health and your life back. If you're the kind of person like Pam, I've been studying and studying integrative health. I've spent a fortune on my health. I want to recover. I don't want to research anymore. I'm ready. I'm ready to take back up my life. I'm ready to become a wellness champion to recover and get on with my life. I don't want to figure this stuff out. I just want to follow a step-by-step -step plan. If that's you, we have, I have a masterclass training that I'm sharing with you. It's free. It's amazing. And it's really going to help you to understand why you're dealing with these symptoms and what we do to recover. And then if you're at that place where like, this makes so much sense, finally it's all put together step by step, then reach out to me. It shows you how you can reach out to me after you listen to the master class training because that's only for people that are ready, for people that are ready to take back their health and their life. So with that, I'll check, double check if there's any last questions here. Oh yes, what can you do to measure the radiation? That's a really good question, Oksana. So I gave you some really simple ideas on how you can reduce it yourself. That's the cheapest way to go. But you can do a Google search in your area. Just type in your city and type in EMF remediation or uh, EMF testing, RF testing, and you will find that there are people that will come to your home with these instruments and they will measure and they'll do a comprehensive review of what's going on in your home. So the big thing there is that I, I always say that pictures and visual is worth so much more than even what I'm sharing. So when they actually come with the instrument and they come up to your router and it's, and you see the units, it's like 600 and you hear them thing going eh, like really loud. You're like, Oh my gosh. And then he unplugs it and it goes down to zero, right? And you're just like, oh, wow, I so get it now. That was like my computer. I learned about EMF, but it actually took me a few months. I got the instrument and I actually measured and I before and after went down almost 200 microwatts per meter squared. That was, that was like, wow, right? And so you can have them come in, but it will cost you probably around 400, 500, $600 but they'll give you a full report. They'll give you lots of recommendations. They'll check all the areas of your home. And it's really important also to make sure to check, do you have cell towers outside of your home, close to your home? Because they're putting more and more antennas because there's so much interference out there with all of, everybody's competing for space, right? In this field. So they're putting more and more antennas, stronger, and so they're emitting more radiation. And if you live close to, and when you watch some of these videos on YouTube about it, Dr. Magda Havis is one that gives a lot of really good, credible information. I really like her because she's very professional. She is still a professor and you'll love her and she's got a heart of gold. But it's so important to, you know, if you have a lot of radiation blasting into your home, you've got to do something about it for sure, or it's going to make you sick for sure. So Julie, you've got Hashimoto's, um, hypothyroidism disease. 
will this work? So with, with any type of thyroid disease, this is very important, but the whole plan is important, right? So decreasing the radiation is important, but all the steps. What I have heard and seen is that thyroid medication is the most heavily prescribed medication or the most commonly prescribed medication in North America right now. Our thyroid is really influenced by the health of our gut. And when we have dysbiosis, these silent infections, which I talk about on my masterclass training, it really impacts our thyroid. So yes, when you heal the gut, when you treat the, the infections, you use all these strategies, right, to build a healthy lifestyle and clean up your environment and stop feeding the infections and then start treating them, build back the good microbes, all the steps I talk about in my masterclass training, your thyroid does heal. There's many people that have recovered from Hashimoto's. It's not as hard as multiple sclerosis or Alzheimer's or ALS. Those are much more difficult conditions. So you're very fortunate if you don't have something more than that because it is gonna still take work, but it's definitely doable and it's worthwhile. This is a warning sign for you, Julie. You have to pay attention. When your thyroid is starting to suffer, it means that there's something going on inside your body as far as the dysbiosis infections. And if you deal with it now, then you can have a beautiful, long and healthy, happy life. But if you ignore these warning signs like I did, because I didn't know I was only 28 years old and I didn't know anything about this, then the diseases progress and we become more and more sick with more serious conditions. Autoimmune, there's lots and lots of autoimmune diseases and hypothyroidism, I believe, is probably linked right in there, but you can get a lot more serious types of diseases. All right, so Danielle just posted my masterclass training. Thank you so much, Danielle, in the feed. So make sure that if you haven't watched that yet, make sure that you watch it. If you've maybe found me for the first time, because that helps you to understand that yes, you can recover in months, not years, but you have to take the right steps. So Don, Pam, what about Graves disease? Absolutely, it's the same thing. So it does take work, for sure it takes work, but all you have to do, you have to use a holistic approach. You have to do many steps all together to recover and it doesn't matter. I've even had a student recover. He didn't need his pacemaker anymore. We have students that don't need their sleep apnea machine. We've got students that come off their diabetes medication that recover from multiple sclerosis and it goes on and on and on. So it doesn't matter what you're dealing with. There's very specific reasons for it and we do know what the reasons are. It is infection in your body. That's the biggest one sometimes nutritional deficiencies, and I'm not gonna get into that today because that would be another whole topic, but I do, I'm sure that I have some videos on that, so just check them out. And number three would be toxins, toxins from our environment, but most of the toxins come from these infections. You have to be aware of that. And when you treat the infections, that inflammation goes down and you start to recover. And people always have a lot more recovery than they thought they would have. Hello, Julie. Well, Julie, then just watch my masterclass training and if you're ready, then you will have an opportunity to chat with me. But that's only for people that are ready to take back their life. Hello, Rowan. You are so very welcome. Okay, that's it. So I'm gonna let you guys go. Next week, the topic is going to be heavy metals, how they are making you sick. It's a really big topic for this day and it's very important to understand the many different ways that they're impacting us. Because if we just kind of talk about, well, heavy metals, yeah, they're not good. And, you know, maybe I'll do, do a little supplement, you know, from the health food store and do a little heavy metal detox. But we just don't understand the sources and how big this is and how this interacts. I'm going to be sharing how this all connects with the infections in your body and how these worms, these different parasites become a heavy metal sink. And it all connects together, really, really important. So with that, I'm gonna let you guys go. Again, please share this with people that are searching. They're looking for a better way to get their life back. And for those of you that are ready, watch my masterclass training and I'm super excited to chat with you. So we'll see you next week. Take care and bye-bye for now.